Well, we've entered into the last week of the Red Letter Challenge. Can you believe that we're already here and time has flown by? Last week, you spent time giving of what God has given to you to and for other people. And this week, we're talking about going. Not about going to serve, not about going to give, but instead going to speak, going to share the gospel news of Jesus, to share what God has done in our lives. And in this week's challenges, you're going to be challenged to go in some ways that are really uncomfortable, that will make you uncomfortable. One of those ways is about sharing your testimony, sharing the story about how God has moved, how God has acted in your life. I think when we hear those words, we're tempted to think and we're tempted to say, well, I don't really have a story, Pastor. I don't really have a good, amazing testimony of this moment when I was such far in unbelief and then God came down from heaven and had a Luther in the lightning storm moment. And I would challenge you that God doesn't need some crazy big story like that to use what he has done in your life to influence, to share, to encourage other people to come closer, to draw closer to him. In fact, I would say to you that any story that isn't centered on you and what you've done and who you are, but is instead centered in what God has done for you, any story of that is a good, is a faithful, is an effective testimony. Because when we're talking about a testimony, all we're really doing is testifying, sharing witness to what God has already done, what God is doing in our life, and sharing that with other people. Peter talks about that in 1 Peter chapter 3. He's addressing this letter to Christians who are suffering, who are in the midst of persecution. And he tells them, he urges them to continue to do good even if you suffer for it. But then he says these words, But set apart Christ as Lord in your hearts, and always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks about the hope you possess. Yet do it with courtesy and respect, keeping a good conscience, so that those who slander your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame when they accuse you. Peter says to the Christians there, that don't just do good, don't just do what you're supposed to, but actually have an answer, be able to respond about why you're doing those things. And so when you think about writing your testimony, when you think about sharing a testimony with other people, think of these words from 1 Peter, to do it with courtesy, with respect, but also do it talking about the hope that you have. You know, your testimony doesn't have to be some long, here's my entire life story. It can certainly be those things. But think about smaller moments, the day-to-day -day things, the moments maybe of suffering, of sadness, of mourning that you've experienced in your life. And how has your faith changed that experience? How did your faith get you through that experience? How did your faith make that experience different than if you wouldn't have had faith at all? Share that in your testimony, whether you write it down, whether you film it, whatever you do. And I want to address two fears, I think, that we have when we think about sharing our faith, when we think about talking about Jesus with other people. Barna Research Group and the Lutheran Hour Ministries joined together and did a study a few years ago on spiritual conversations. And they found two things that I think are helpful and encouraging for us whenever we think about sharing our faith. First thing they found is that people want to have spiritual conversations. They want to talk about their faith with these three people most. Their spouses, their closest friends, and their children. To share our testimony, to share our faith, we should think first about these three small circles, the people who are closest to us. They're the ones who are most comfortable, most willing to at least have these conversations with us. And then second, I think most of us have a fear that if we talk about Jesus, if we talk about our faith, that then it means people may disown us, that it may mean that they will hate what we say and that they'll never want to talk to us again. 
And if we're being honest, that may happen. But in this study, 75% almost of people who had a conversation with someone of a different faith background than they were, not different denomination, different faith, said they were glad that they had that conversation. 75%. So you can go. You can talk about what Jesus is doing in your life with a little less fear. Because that person you're talking about, you're talking to them about this because you love them. But the research shows also that it's not maybe as scary, it's not as intimidating as we think it is. It's not as divisive as we think it is either. But of course, at the end of the day, we do all of this because Jesus has called us to do that exact thing. To be his messengers, to go and share his news with the world, share what he's doing in our life. So I want to thank you for joining us on this Red Letter Challenge, and I want to pray for you as you go out and be his messenger this week. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh, and your gospel is the good news. I pray this week that as we share our testimony, as we share what you are, have done and are doing in our lives, that you would send your Holy Spirit along with those words that you would use it to draw people closer to you, and that even through it, you would draw us closer to you too, Lord. Thank you for the time that we've had these past weeks to spend in your word, to spend among the red letters in our Bible. I pray that this would not be the end for us, but that you would continue to shape us, continue to make us into people who are your disciples, your apprentices each and every day, that we may believe your words, and that we may be people who put them into practice as well. I pray this all in your name, Jesus. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you as you share the story of what he's doing in your life this week.